I'm Dr. Shirazi and I'm a board certified dermatologist and as we're wrapping up 2021 I'm getting so many questions about skincare trends to look for in 2022. It was another big year for skincare this year so I want to share three skincare trends that I see coming in the new year but before we get started don't forget to rate review and subscribe and turn on your notifications so you know when I upload a new video. The first one is skinification of hair. I think we are paying more and more attention to our scalp, our hair. I know with the start of the pandemic, I'm seeing so many patients come into the office with hair loss and hair thinning. So it seems natural that we've paid attention not just to our face, but also our scalp and our hair. And we're applying the same treatments and the same ingredients that we traditionally use to rejuvenate the skin on the face to rejuvenate the skin and the scalp and the hair. One of the ingredients that was huge in 2021 was squalane, mainly because it mimics our own natural oil. However, we stopped producing as much of it starting in our 20s and 30s is one of the reasons our skin becomes drier as we age. It was a big year. There was a lot of moisturizers that came out with that ingredient in it because it's so nourishing, helps with regulating oil production, a great antioxidants. It helps support the skin barrier. And now we're gonna be seeing hemisqualane, which is a lighter molecule, so it spreads better, make its way into hair care products because it's lighter, it doesn't weigh the hair down, it helps reduce the frizz, add shine, and helps to protect the hair. And an advantage of hemisqualane over silicone is that it doesn't build up like silicone does. Silicone tends to build up on strands and can lead to breakage. Uh, whereas hemisqualane is just a cleaner ingredient that works similarly and provides the same benefits. So I think we're going to be seeing more and more hair care products with this ingredient in mind, as well as hyaluronic acid, because hyaluronic acid is a big ingredient for the facial skin care products. And now we're going to be seeing it in hair care because it does a nice job of hydrating and plumping up the hair strands. Uh, so look for those skincare ingredients in hair care formulas in the new year. Another manifestation of skinification of hair is derma rolling and microneedling to promote scalp hair growth. Like I said, we've seen a lot of hair loss uh, since the beginning of the pandemic. So a lot of people are seeking out treatments and formulations to help nourish their hair back to life and help with hair thinning. And so microneedling is one trend that I've been seeing a lot of people doing at home. There's been recent studies that show improvement and support, but these studies have paired microneedling and derma rolling with hair stimulating agents. So we still need more evidence and data to support just microneedling alone to stimulate hair growth, because I think it's the combination of microneedling with hair stimulating agents like minoxidil or bimatoprost that can stimulate hair because microneedling allows for greater penetration of these hair stimulating agents. So we still need more data, but so far there's limited research that shows some potential support for it. However, a lot of it has been done with PRP, so it's hard to tell whether derma rolling on its own would have any benefit. To learn more about microneedling and derma rolling, check out this video that I made recently. Trend number two, we're gonna keep it simple in the new year. I just have this feeling that we are learning to use comprehensive products, don't have this 58 step routine like some celebrities that we know may have uh, recently showed. And in 2021, we learned that bacteria is no longer a dirty word for our skin. We have learned that we need some of these good healthy bacteria and yeast on our skin to help with our skin barrier and the microbiome of our skin because if we throw that off and we really wipe out a lot of these good organisms it can wreak havoc on our skin we can see different skin conditions flare up whether there's too many of them or too little of them we really need to find a good balance and our skin actually is pretty sophisticated. It doesn't need a lot of our help to be able to function. So sometimes I think we try too hard or we use too many products, you know, and, and, and social media doesn't help. I'm sure you guys see me talking about a certain cream or product and then, you know, of course you wanna try it because you think it's great. Next thing you know, you know, now you've got 20 products instead of, you know, just three. 
So I think this next year, we're really gonna focus on keeping skincare simple because over exfoliating, overuse of products can really strip our natural skin oils and it can really compromise our skin barrier. And for the skin, the skin barrier is key. It's the key to healthy glowing skin. Everyone asks me, what's the key to healthy glowing skin? A strong skin barrier because it keeps the bad stuff out, it keeps the good stuff in, and your skin is able to exfoliate better or use Retin-A when your skin barrier is healthy. And I think this ideology goes hand in hand with our notion of sustainability in skincare because we really don't need a lot of the products that we're using. I mean, I see products with single ingredients like niacinamide, 10%. Well, niacinamide is really not designed to be a solo product or ingredient. It's designed to be formulated with other ingredients such as in sunscreen or such as with retinol. And with hyaluronic acid. Now every skincare product has hyaluronic acid. So do you really need just pure hyaluronic acid serum? Well, maybe just to use as a primer because I find that that works really well under makeup. But a lot of the skincare that we use as single ingredient products we can formulate with other ingredients to make more comprehensive products. For example, Dermabrite pads has kojic acid, arbutin, emlica, burberry, and we can mix in a hydroquinone. It has vitamin C in it. So really that's a comprehensive product because you've got all the natural skin barriers that we read about that are great, but it's formulated into one product. Now you don't have to get it with hydroquinone. You can get it without the hydroquinone, but it's the same concept. You want comprehensive products. Not only does it save your skin, but it also saves you money in the long run. And then the last trend, we are going to be looking at more ethically sourced and eco-friendly ingredients. Plant-based ingredients are going to be big in 2022 as we are moving towards sustainability. We're going to look for these up and coming ingredients such as edelberry, resveratrol, as well as centella, acia sacata. These are examples of ingredients that were finding out through more and more research have a lot of benefits, they're plant derived, and we are working on formulations that take these plant derived ingredients and formulate them into skincare. Another example is squalane. We're gonna see more squalane being harvested from sugarcane as opposed to shark liver, because that is just better for the planet and better for our ecosystem. So I think, I think we're gonna see a trend towards sustainability in skincare, uh, which goes along with keeping things simple. So I'm excited for 2022. I think it's gonna be another big year for skincare, for hair care, and we're gonna be moving off the face in 2022. We're gonna be paying more attention to our hands, our neck and chest, other areas that deserve our attention. So I'm excited. As we're wrapping up 2021, I wanna thank all of you for your support. It's been a big year for me. It's been a great year for me. And I hope that all the information that I've put out this year has been valuable to you. If you have a friend or somebody you know that might also find it educational, uh, share uh, the content with them, share the videos with them. So thank you guys for your support and I will continue to produce more content in the new year. Thanks for tuning in and happy new year.